Many healthcare providers have never seen a case of measles because the measles vaccine has been so effective. It is important that you, as a healthcare provider, are familiar with the clinical presentation of measles so you can quickly diagnose it and reduce the spread of the virus in your clinic and community. Because it is so rare, measles has sometimes been misdiagnosed as Kawasaki's disease, roseola, dengue, or scarlet fever. Misdiagnosis can delay your ability to implement critical measures to stop measles from spreading. So you should consider measles in the differential diagnosis of patients with clinically compatible symptoms. Measles should move up on your differential diagnosis if your patient has not been vaccinated against measles, recently traveled internationally, or may have been exposed to someone who recently traveled abroad, or lives in or has traveled to a community where measles cases are currently occurring. After the incubation period, which is on average 11 to 12 days, symptoms typically begin with the fever and the three C's, cough, coryza, and conjunctivitis. There is a stepwise increase in temperature, which may exceed 103 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 39 degrees Celsius. Two or three days after symptoms begin, an astute observer may see coplic spots, which are small white spots found on the buccal mucosa. Three to five days after symptoms begin, the characteristic measles rash breaks out. It usually begins as a macular papular rash or flat red spots with small raised bumps that appear on the face at the hairline and spreads downwards to the neck, trunk, arms, and then to the legs and feet. The spots may become confluent or join together as they spread from the head to the rest of the body. It is also important to note that fever should be present when the rash starts. This helps differentiate measles from other rash illnesses like roseola. This picture shows a classic case of the rash caused by measles. Notice the intensity of the macular papular rash on the face and trunk. Measles is more difficult to see in patients with dark skin. If the rash is accompanied by other symptoms, such as cough or conjunctivitis, measles is easier to diagnose. If you suspect that a patient has measles, you should act quickly. Do not wait until lab tests come back. Patients with measles are infectious from four days before through four days after rash, with day zero being the day of rash onset. So documenting the date when the rash first appeared is important. Control measures must be started immediately. The three things you need to do right away are isolate, obtain specimens, and report. Promptly isolate the patient to a room with a door that closes to avoid disease transmission. Ideally, the patient should go into a negative pressure room if available. Make sure that the only people assigned to take care of the isolated patient are healthcare personnel with two documented doses of measles, mumps, rubella, or MMR vaccine. Also make sure they always wear a fitted N95 mask before they enter the patient's room. Obtain specimens for testing from patients with suspected measles. You should collect a throat swab to detect the measles virus using a test called PCR. You should also collect a blood specimen, which is used to detect IgM antibodies against the virus. IgM testing should only be used for patients suspected to have measles. It should not be used to see if a patient is immune to measles. Immediately report the suspected measles case to the health department. Your health department will let you know where you should send the specimens. They will work with you to identify who else was exposed and who may need post-exposure prophylaxis. People who are at high risk for complications and therefore should be prioritized include infants younger than one year, pregnant women, and those with immunocompromising conditions. Most patients recover completely from measles, but some suffer from complications that can be severe, including pneumonia and encephalitis. 
In the decade before the U.S. measles vaccination program began, an estimated 400 to 500 people died, 48,000 people were hospitalized, and another 1,000 were reported to develop chronic disability from measles encephalitis. The more cases we have, the greater the chance we will see more serious outcomes associated with measles. For example, one rare but fatal complication is subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, or SSPE, which presents an average of seven years after a case of measles. The risk of SSPE is highest in children who get measles before they are two years of age. We hope you never see a case of measles in your community. Measles is preventable through the use of a safe and highly effective vaccine. It is important to make sure your patients are up to date on their vaccinations. It is also important to ensure you and other staff in your practice have been vaccinated or have documented evidence of immunity. For information on clinical features, diagnosis, and complications of measles, visit cdc.gov forward slash measles forward slash HCP.